सो पवित्र श्राद्ध पक्ष श्राद्ध पक्ष इज गोइंग ऑन एंड वी ऑल भागवत कथा एवं पितृ महिमा श्रवण आर लिस्निंग to the glories of shrimad bhagavatam and the veneration of or oblation of our ancestors our forefathers that is shrad so unke bete beti bhagavat usually bhagavat katha is organized by when their parents leave the world but the host of our katha like manika mata ji and while her mother is alive she is making her mother listen to shrimad bhagavatam and ruma mai roy mata ji also so they are giving their offering as when even when their parents are alive so it is usually said that if you don't satisfy your forefathers ancestors and parents but no matter and no matter how much you serve or worship the deities or all the 33 crores of demigods and demigodesses will won't be able to make you happy and satisfied if all of them try to give you happiness but if our forefathers and sisters are not satisfied then they cannot satisfy us or make us happy even if they try to do so it is mentioned in the verse सदा पितृ कार्य विशेषते देवताभ्यो ही पूर्व पितृणाप्याय वर देव कार्याद अपि सदा सदा के लिए देव कार्य अपी सदा सो इवन बाय डूइंग ऑल द देव कार्य सो व्हाट इज दिस देव कार्य विशिष्यते पितृ कार्य विशिष्यते सो विशेष मानी गई वर्शिपिंग योर एंसेस्टर्स इज फार मोर इंपॉर्टेंट देन वर्शिपिंग द डेमिगॉड्स it is mentioned in the puranas that no matter how much you serve or worship the demigods then if your ancestors or fathers are not satisfied then no matter what you won't be able to satis- be satisfied even if all the demigods try hard so the oblations towards our ancestors or fathers were dead we need to offer our sacrifice and when we are talking about this auspicious time that is this month or the shraddha paksha it is mentioned for the shraddha para taram nanya there is not a better work or deed to be performed during this month so in reference to this month it is said that in this shraddha paksha shreyas karam udaharitam shraddha se param shreya karya aur koi so there is not a single work which is greater than performing this oblation towards our forefathers and therefore we should try our heart and no matter what we should try to perform and offer our veneration oblation to our forefathers it is mentioned in the puranas so this is the most auspicious time that 
this Shraddha Paksha or Pitru Paksha is going on. And we all are remembering our forefathers. And we have taken the shelter of Srimad Bhagavatam and we are listening to the same. Today, we are going to listen to the pastime of a sage from Maharashtra, Eknaji. Sometimes we think that we are devotees, so we need not. We don't require to perform Shrad ceremony. But the greatest, greatest devotees of the Lord have <coughs> offered their offerings, oblations to their forefathers. For example, Narsi Mehta did it and the sage from or the saint from Maharashtra, Eknaji, also performed this Shraddha ceremony. So Eknath means who has only one worshipable God. And how many God or passes we have. We change our allegiance to our masters. Sometimes our boss is our master. And whenever we require, we make them our master. But this saint, Eknath, it is mentioned that he only considered Krishna as his master. And in Marathi language, he has written many beautiful scriptures. So, Paithan Gaon mein, Maharashtra mein ek gaon hai, Paithan. So, Paithan mein, Sant Eknath Ji. So, in Paithan, that is a village in Maharashtra. And this Shraddha Paksha came. Aur Sant Eknath Maharaj, Shraddha Paksha. And and a devotee abides, imbibes all the Vedic scriptures. So a saint, according to Kapil Dev, is the one who understands the scriptures and imbibes them in his life. So in this Radhapaksh, it is auspicious to perform oblations to our ancestors. So Eknaji had decided or discussed with his wife that we will perform Shraddha ceremony tomorrow. So they accumulated everything that was required and they started cooking for the same. So beautifully, Eknaji's wife was cooking and Eknaji is sitting outside the home. And while sitting, he is performing the congregation chanting and he is waiting for the brahmanas that I will welcome them, uh, them and I will offer them the food offering. So today, Eknaji's wife's mellow or emotion with which she prepares. So it is, I always give an example of Satyana and Katha that whatever <laughs> the sweet Prasadam we get after the conclusion of the katha the, that you eat is far greater, tasteful, relishable than the one, even if we had try hard to cook it at home. So Eknaji's wife, as she was preparing to venerate the brahmanas, to offer her ancestors or their ancestors. So she was beautifully cooking and there was the aroma was going everywhere. And Eknaji was waiting and outside and, and while they were passing, the the fam the shudras with their children were going and these children told the mother that we can we sense 
the aroma of beautiful, beautiful dishes that are being prepared. Would you be able to give us as well? So the mother replied to these children that, oh, dear son, it's not in our providence to eat such a meal. Even this essence or aroma is also very, very difficult for us. So she was trying to counsel her children that in this life you won't be able to get such delicious food. And Ek Sant Ekna Ji was listening to this conversation between the mother and her children and listening to this conversation his heart started melting he started contemplating and thinking i was waiting for the brahmanas but these fourth class or the fourth type of people are here and the the children had this desire to enjoy this meal and everybody is a part and parcel so there is no difference between the different and living entities because the supreme soul resides in everybody's but everybody so why we should appreciate and if these children have this desire and it is mentioned in our shastras that or vedic injunctions that children are equivalent to the lord because they, they are so innocent they lack any conceit or deceit and now that these children have this desire and if i don't offer them food then i will be incurring a sin shri vedvyas muni have written how many scriptures he has written he has written four vedas 108 upanishads 18 puranas including mahabharat etc so if in one shlok, if you have to speak this, all these scriptures of Vedvyas Ji, then the conclusion of the same is only Mahamuni Vyasi's conclusion or essence of his scriptures is that that there is not not a graver sin than hurting someone or offending other and there is not a austerity than to be charitable to others so there is one thing for sure that this world is temporary. We all are travelers here. So just imagine that a traveler who, who travel and they find a piao that is a place where they used to keep water for the people so they don't differentiate why they're stretches in the society it is for everybody so when there is no difference in in restaurants and even in the piaus so saint eknath ji after listening to this conversation, his heart started melting. He became overwhelmed and he thought in his heart that there is not a greater principle of religiosity than to help others. And these children are inclined to eat this food they had this they have this intense desire and if i don't offer it then it will be a grave sin for me so he decided that everybody has the lord in their heart 
and they the lord inspires everybody so i will offer the food to them saint ekna ji rose and he approached the mother and told her that do me a favor you bring all your society all the people and we will offer this food to you so it might be possible that had he gone to his wife and told that she might have been upset about that or displeased that now i will have to prepare again it was for the sages and saints do you even know how much food we have so her the real test of a devoted wife is when a some a, a devotee or a guest come at the home and they don't have sufficient supplies and how they welcome them at that time bhai shri hanuman prasad podar who is the shiksha guru of our guru maharaj he has written a beautiful verse i want to share it with you he says के नीज हीत अपना हीत सब लोग चाहते हैं ना कि मेरा ही सेज दैट एवरीबॉडी थिंक्स अबाउट देयर वेलफेयर एंड वेल बीइंग दैट आई शुड बी हेल्दी माय फैमिली शुड बी हैप्पी एंड एवरीबॉडी इज बिजी विद दिस सेल्फ कंसर्न नीज हीत जैसे आदमी अपना हीत चाहता है तो अनुमान पोदार जी सेज दैट एज अ पर्सन डिजायर्स दिस सेल्फ बीइंग but if he start is thinking about the well being or welfare of others so in the same manner he thinks about his own well being and if he does it for everybody and if he behaves with everyone as their own then seeing that everybody has lord or the supreme soul residing in their hearts then we should understand to measure or say that we have started becoming a devotee otherwise we don't even have an iota of anulai devotional service the welfare that we require that we want or desire and we do for ourselves if we do it for others then only we should think that the devotional service is rising in us or it's starting so, to take shape so ekna ji's wife was girija bai and she was even two steps ahead of her husband she, when he told his wife that the brahmanas are not have not yet arrived but here here so, to eat so she said that the brahmanas come and we will offer them but now these people are here so we should serve them sant tukara sant eknath ji to phir bhi thodi buddhi se soch rahe the sant eknath ji was still thinking from her mind but his wife girija bai was looking the supreme soul in everybody's heart aa hu उधर तू ही तू है नदियों में तू है पहाड़ों में तू है जिधर देखता हूँ कन्हैया हे कृष्ण जिधर देखता हूँ वहा तू ही तू है नदियों में तू है पहाड़ों में तू है 
छोटे में तू है बड़ो में तू है पंडित में तू है अंत्यज में तू है ये संत एकनाथ की पत्नी गिरजा बाई का भाव था एकनाथ जी गिरजा बाई had this beautiful thought and she made them sit gave them place to sit and then she made them sit and she started offering them food with full heart and they she contented them they couldn't have even imagined that they will ever get an opportunity to eat such a delicious food but during this oblation to their forefathers they offered to these people and they offered it with great love and care kindness and after that <laughs> girija bai gave them the mouth freshener and everybody was satisfied and they all left but o oh, devotees when these lower people they couldn't speak like brahmanas brahmanas would have spoken some mantra and gave them boon and benediction and benediction as they are well aware of the shastras so they were not able to speak but without speaking they were giving them bhojan ko apni jagah par boon and benediction from their heart it said that food is something but how much they have offered us respect where people disregard us disrespect us and they change their course but here this saint eknath had offered us show us so much respect So no matter how much big we become, but if we sit and feed this such people, then the the boon or the heartfelt blessings that come from their heart, I don't think that any pandit or a brahmana can give it. संत एकनाथ नाथ यू आर सेटिस्फाइड बट एंड हैप्पी बट जेन एक नाथ एंड गिरजा बाई बोथ वर है मेनी फोल्स बाय ऑफरिंग देम द फूड और प्रसाद नाउ दे ऑल एज एंड वेन दे लेफ्ट नाउ दे आर लुकिंग एट ईच अदर दैट दिस हैव दिस अकम्पलिश वेरी वेल बट आई हैव इन्वाइटेड द ब्राह्मण एज एज वेल and they are about to reach so he, she said that don't worry so she said i will arrange i will make the food you just rearrange everything and clean so that they can sit here on a clean place and let me go and cook so sant ekta ji started washing the pla- the place cleaning the place and on other hand girija bai started cooking again for the brahmanas aur brahman aaye and the brahmanas came line mein pangat mein baith bhi gaye and they all sat as well bada active brahman tha jo social but there was one active who was more powerful on social media and he told that we should not eat here they said that the aroma is fine why we should not eat here they said that two hours prior the lower is matlab ye sthan apavitra ho chuka hai ye jagah apavitra ho chuka hai people were here and now they ate here so this home has become impurified and when the brahmanas realized so they all stood up 
and they become became agitated angry and they told ekta you want you have called us so that you could disrespect us don't you know that how much strict pure brahmana or devotee of the lord we are where these shudras eat are we going to eat there so they were all displeased agitated and have you even if you wanted to offer then you should have offered them our leftover and now we are going to take the left leftover of the shudras so ekna ji said that we were preparing the food for you but when they sense the aroma the one who enjoy the aroma then also it becomes so so this smelling is equivalent to eating so if you are preparing a meal for the lord then you should have that much expect that even without smelling it we should cook so already it was the less they have to they sit it through their nose so and you don't worry uh, so that's why we offered it to them and now we have cleansed everything and we have made the food again with all purity for all of you so he tried to appease them counsel them but they didn't agree so ek aur ek nath ji mana rahe hain ye brahman on one hand ek nath ji is trying to specify them but they are not agreeing and at that time what happened please listen carefully a devotee is with folded hands requesting them again and again but the this bhagwan use sahan nahi karta hai was intolerable for the lord to see his devotee in such a disparent situation so there was a servant who used to used to fill water ekna ji is home he used to deliver water and his name was khandiya 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 to bhagwan khandiya ka roop lekar sant so lord took the form of this khandiya and stood there in with next to ekna ji and he was this please he couldn't tolerate this disrespectful behavior of the brahmana towards his devotee so he told nath ji you prepared it for oblation of your forefathers he said that this today is my fathers death anniversary that is why i want to offer the food to them that is why i have called the brahmana so the, this khandiya or the lord in the form of khadiya said that you call them that if you, if the brahmanas are not eating then why don't you just call your forefathers straight forwardly he said that just try so the brahmanas were already shouting agitated son eknath ji listening to khandiya's advice he put a banana leaf and keep the prasadam and he worship that if i have done this with all my heart and consciousness then please accept this offering and this is yesterday's history and as on khandiya's behalf ekna ji called and as he said agatam his father his grandfather three generations came forward you can see in the cartoon or in the backdrop behind so uske pitamah aur uske prapitamah so three generations came forward and seeing his father great grandfather and father ekna ji was happy and started dancing
राम कृष्ण हरि 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 राम कृष्ण राम कृष्ण हरि राम कृष्ण हरि राम कृष्ण हरि राम कृष्ण हरि सो इस प्रकार संत एकनाथ जी नाचने लगे इन दिस मैनर एकनाथ जी वाज हैप्पी on seeing all his four fathers here and they are eating straightforwardly the brahmana thought that now over we will be at loss because they have removed us completely and offering it directly so ekna ji offered his oblation and they were they the forefathers were satisfied and gave him benediction and blessing so now this shraddh was completed but these brahmanas were still agitated and angry and they told ekna that you have offended the brahmanas they said that you invited us and you didn't offer us food you straight forwardly offered it to the brahmana to your ancestors said that i wanted to offer you but you were not doing it so they said that you need to absolve your sins said that my parents are krishna i perform devotional service so i don't need to absolve any sin or atone my sins so said that you should atone your sins so on their behest ekna ji accepted and said that okay what shall i do he said that you should offer you should put ashes on your body and you should consume the five things of from the cow and immediately take a bath so a devotee doesn't debate a lot and he accepts and if you think that i have offended so let me rectify it. although he hasn't done anything wrong but yet he accepted it and he put the ashes and consumed this panch gavya or the five products of the cow and they and he went to take the dip and the mantras were chanting <laughs> the verses so this atonement process was going on and there was one thing that happened so please listen very carefully uh, a disease person whose skin was rotting and gradually that person who is suffering dies and such ramana who was diseased came and he was searching where is eknath and the brahmana said that he is atoning his sin what why do you what do you need from him why are you looking out for him then that person with leprosy said that i was in krambakeshwar that is the where the shivling of pilgrimage for lord shiva and i have performed great austerity for many many years to lord shiva and he became satisfied with me and said that what do you desire and i replied that i want to be disease free from liberated from this leprosy and lord shiva said okay but you will have to do one thing he said that in python there is a great devotee of lord vishnu whose name is eknath us eknath ji 
and that Ekta ji has just performed the Shraddh ceremony and got a great fruit of the same. So, the Brahmanas are thinking that they, he hasn't even offered us food, but he has. How did he got this fruit? And if he gives some part of it to you, then you will be disease free. That is why I'm looking for this Saint Sant Eknath. I said that he is taking a dip in the Holy and he is eternal. But Lord Shiva has said that he is a great pious person. So Saint Eknath came out and listening to this, he said that I don't have any qualification, but the words of Lord Shiva cannot be false. So he took some order. Whatever piety you have got of it, that I will give some of it to you and give and put the water on him. And this person was completely transformed. His leprosy was cured completely, and he was starting shining effulgently. And this proved hence that Eknaji was not at fault. And by just offering the food to these poor people, destitute people, he had gained or gathered great piety. Uh, so if someone serves without any ulterior motive, motivation of fruit or benefit, then that person becomes capable to give boons and benediction to others. So such Saint Eknath on today's day, during this Pitrupaksha time, offered oblations to his forefathers in this manner. So we all should also follow these great sages and saints and perform offering to our ancestors of our fathers. So I really like that Ruma Mata and she's making her daughter, mother sit with them. So in Manus Mita, it is mentioned if the parents are alive or if they're not alive, then we should keep their picture and what work we should do for them. So this is the verse from Manu Samhita. Look, Shravayet word means to listen. Shravayet, that is, they should make them listen. So, to our parents and grandparents, etc., if they're alive, we should make them listen or read Bhagavatam or Dharma Shastra. And in the second line, it is said, Akhyani Itihas. So, the scriptures like Mahabharata are the Itihas and Dharma Shastra means all the Vedas, Puranas or the Vedic injunctions and Purans like Bhagavatam should be recited to them. So in this Shraddha ceremony, we should recite to them. If our parents or forefathers are alive, then we should make them sit like Manika Mataji is sitting with Kusum Mataji. So, and if they're not in this world anymore, then we should keep their picture and thinking about them in our heart. We should listen to the Bhagavatam or the Puranas. 
Itihasas Estre, etc. So now we have heard the glories of the Pitrupaksha. Now let's perform the congregational chanting and proceed to the glories of Bhagavatam. Shri Pavan Pitru Paksha Ki Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari जय गोपी चित चोर प्रभो जय जय माखन चोर जय जय माखन चोर श्री कृष्ण चंद्र भगवान के जगत गुरु शिल प्रभुपाद के उपस्थित हरि कृष्णा भगवत कथा अनुरागी आई वेलकम ऑल द लविंग डिवोटीज ऑफ श्रीमद् भागवतम द अटेंडेंस डिवोटीज परम सुशोभित करने वाले I also extend my warm welcome and gratitude to the mellowful senior devotees who have decorated this assembly. I also welcome you all who are here listening and the organizers of this beautiful katha manika mataji and kusum singh mataji and from uk shri rumaroy mataji and their family i welcome you all on the last and the seventh day of this katha welcome back and Please accept our humble obeisances at your lotus feet. Radhe Shyam. Shrimad Bhagavat Shruti Fal. Shrimad Bhagavatam Shruti Fal. So far we have heard the 24 Shruti Fal and their pastimes. And today under this, we are going to listen about the 25th Shruti Fal or the fruit of listening to the pastime. So today, you are going to get confused that whose pastime is this? Yesterday, it was the Matsya and the, by backdrop, you were able to recognize the pastimes like with Charding and Matsya incarnation of the Lord. Although this katha is not that famous, or this pastime is not famous in Bhagavatam, although it should be because it is very, very glorious pastime. And this is the pastime of Nabhag's son, Nabhag's pastime. As you all might be aware that from Brahmaji, there are many, many clans that started from Vishnuji Brahmaji originated and one of sons of Brahmaji was Marichi and from Marichi there was a son whose name was Kashyap Muni so from Brahmaji Marichi and from Marichi Kashyap Muni and Kashyapji had 16 wives and of them Aditi's elder son was son God who is also referred to as Vijaswan. So he had two wives. One was Sangya. Brahma, Bhagavan Vishnu se Brahma 
So from Vishnu ji, Brahma ji, and Brahma ji, from Brahma ji, Mari ji, and Mari ji, son Kashyap, and his son Surya or sun god, who is also referred to as Vivaswan, and he had two wives, Chaya and Sangya. As you all are aware, Chaya was the mother of Yamraj, etc. And from Sangya, he, they begot Manu and they begot 10 famous sons. So these 10 sons of Manu, were, one of them was Ikshvaku, in whose disciplic succession or clan Lord Ramchandra appeared. And second son was Nrig, then Shariati, then Drisht, Drisht. And sixth was Purushkal, seventh was Narishyant, eighth Prishagra, ninth was Nabhag, and tenth was Kavi. So in this manner, Manu had ten sons, and of them, one of them was Nabhag. And he had four sons. The youngest of them all was Nabhag. So this character behind me, so all those behind me, or the one behind me is Nabhag. Nabhag or Nabhag who was the ninth son of Manu and his elder, youngest son was Nabhag who is standing here. So this pastime of King Nabhag is in Srimad Bhagavatam's ninth canto fourth chapter. In very few verses, in ten verses it is concluded but Shukdev Goswami says that this pastime of King Nabhag, if someone listens, they get a great benefit. So, the ninth canto, fourth chapter and fourth verse, King Nabhag and his son Nabhag, fruit as is mentioned here. Mahitaha Kavir Bhavati Mantra Gyo Gatim Chaiva Tathat Mana Gatim Chaiva Tathat Mana Ya Etat so, so yah means a person who listens this so only humans will listen not the animals so, so there is one thing that is fixed that by listening to this we can prove that we are you all humans at least standing in front of the lord we can tell the lord that we all are humans because those who don't listen to the pastimes of the lord even after getting a human life, Lord Shiva says that they are all as good as dead. This, he says that that person is not a human, but he is already dead. So Puman means human, and Etat means this. So Manu, Putra, Nabhag's and Nabhag's pastime listens to the same. And 
इज नॉट टॉकिंग अबाउट लिस्निंग संस्मरित इट इज वेरी वेरी क्लोरियस टू लिसन एंड रिमेम्बर so you all listen to the katha or past times it is good but it will be far better when you contemplate on those past time remember them it is very very relishable and it is the life and soul of great great devotees and sages and saints and if you don't remember then you will get engaged in the material nonsensical talks it's better to remember the past times of the lord and while we leave our body that only will be beneficial because in bhagavad gita krishna says that if you have remembered then you will be able to remember me at the time of death otherwise we won't be able to see nor we will be able to speak or do anything else we can just remember because our speech is stopped and our eyes stopped look seeing the, the children just try to make up their heart or pacify their themselves that my father was looking at the lords in age or by listening to harina so when it is the time to leave the body then all these sense organs stop working nobody can hear or see but when when we are about to leave our body our heart or mind is focused although our all senses stop working but our mind is activated so if we remember the lord throughout our life then we will be able to remember him at the time of death therefore we should remember so the goal of shravan or that is listening or kirtan that is chanting is to remember this is the advantage and it is easier to remember because outwardly you don't have to work much so anyhow so if someone listens to this carefully or remembers carefully a person will be able to remember only when he listens this carefully if you don't know it properly then you won't be able to memorize it recollect it so first we should understand and listen carefully and then we should try to recollect memorize remember it aur nabhag ki katha ka smaran karta hai kab so if someone remembers this past time when sayam pratah pratah sayam that is in the morning or that is the brahma muhurta or the early we hours of the morning and sayam is the evening so in the path of devotional service sham ko suno dopher ko suno it is so much flexible that we can hear in the morning or in the evening but we should remember su samahit mane apni su samahit control karke by controlling our senses with focused one pointed attention that is su samahit ekagr chitt san ekagr chitt san that is we should have a focused attention and if we remember this past time to phal kya milta hai of nabhag what is the fruit or benefit in the third line it is mentioned kavir bhavati we will become a poet a learned scholar we don't have to participate in a nishchit hai kavir bhavati aap kavi ban jaoge so we don't expect to be a part of 
भाई खैर आजकल तो ये कवि हैं कवियों की उतनी वैल्यू नहीं है तो ऑल दो जमाना हुआ करता था वी टुडे पोएट्स आर नॉट कंसीडर्ड टू बी वर्दी बट देयर वर टाइम्स व्हेन द ताकत होती थी फैन ऑफ द पोएट्स यूज्ड टू चेंज द कोर्स ऑफ द वर्ल्ड और द कंट्री राजा बट टुडे दे आर नॉट वेरी रिटर प्रीवियसली the kings used to bring the poets and who used to be fearless and used to give their opinion so how many imagination of a poet is that he is wearing a kurta and he has a bag but here in this verse it is mentioned pratha sayam cha samahit kavir bhavati ये मनुपुत्र नभग और नाभाग की कथा सुनने से आप को बाय जस्ट लिसनिंग टू दिस पास टाइम यू विल बिकम कवि सो देयर आर मेनी मेनी मीनिंग्स ऑफ दिस वर्ड सो प्लीज ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड विद एन ओपन माइंड फर्स्ट मीनिंग इज अ स्कॉलर विद्वान सो यह कथा सुनने से आप विद्वान सो बाय लिसनिंग टू दिस यू विल बिकम वाइज और लर्नेड कैटेगरी में कवि आता है विद्वान विद्वान इज लोअर बट अ लर्नेड स्कॉलर हु नोज एंड हैज द नॉलेज एंड देन ही ट्राइज टू क्रिएट प्रोज एंड वर्सेस टू एक्सप्लेन देम दैट इज अ कवि सो ही इज बेटर देन इवन अ लर्नेड स्कॉलर देन इट इज आल्सो कंसीडर्ड एज कांत दर्शी क्रांत एक होता है आक्रांत आक्रांत माने निष्ठुर निर्दयी आक्रांत इज हु इज हार्ड हार्टेड और अ टेररिस्ट एक होता है क्रांत एंड देन अदर इज क्रांत क्रांत दर्शी जो क्रांत दर्शी होते हैं उसे कवि कहते हैं और कवि का सो ही इज अ रेवोल्यूशनरी मैं भूल गया नाम मैंने बहुत वर्ष पहले मेनी मेनी इयर्स बैक i read krishna chandra shastri who is a great scholar of bhagavatam he has given many meanings of this kavi whatever i remember i am trying to share it with you so in easy going language he has written matlab matlab ka samay ka samay bolna nahi chahiye when a person should not speak and he keeps mom that is a kavi that is a person who is learned there are times or assembly where we should not speak much hamare gujarati mein do kahawat hai in gujarati there is a phrase by not speaking there are nine qualities but there on other hand there is that the saying that the one who speaks can only sell his goods so these two phrases are exact opposite of the same but if we join them both then we will understand there are times when we should keep mute that will be our greatness and there are times when we it becomes necessary to speak and it is it will be our greatness to speak so at the opportune time when to speak and when to stop samay par nahi bolna ye jiske andar calculation hai so a person who has this calculation or knowledge that person is a kavi so by listening to this past time yaad aa raha hai ki hamare after seeing i just remember that from tennessee devang bhai celebrated his marriage anniversary yesterday I forgot yesterday, so let me. So, so, so. शुभ कामना, दिवंग भाई का. Congratulations. खास करके उनका बेटा. दिवंग भाई. They serve beautifully the Dukupal. अधे हो. So many many congratulations. I we hope and pray that you will have a devo, devotion. successful marriage life and along with that our mellowful devotee the denizen of garg ji ka aaj 
Delhi. Ashok Garg ji is also celebrating his birthday today. So wherever you are, our good wishes, best wishes, we pray that you always perform devotional service and not only the whole family but the whole world should become devotee that is our prayer so let's proceed to nabhak it is said that if someone listens to the pastimes of nabhak and nabhak then he becomes a learned scholar so this is what Krishna Chandra Shastri so I always give reference whenever I remember I don't want to take credit of anyone so they all should get the credit and he has mentioned Katu na vade iti kavi, that means the one who never, I don't know how he arranged, but the one who doesn't speak harsh, bitter words is a learned scholar or a kavi. When you all speak, then the honey flows. But those who speak, who doesn't speak bitter or harsh words, then he is a scholar or a wise man. So who doesn't speak in an inappropriate time, nor speaks harsh words and another there is a word a meaning by him he says who doesn't have any fault that is a kavi who doesn't speaks anything that is not good and who, who speaks what is for beneficial Benefit of others, which is beneficial for others, he is a kavi. Further, he is. He should not speak less. Sometimes people. Someone who don't speak, we don't understand what is going inside their head or heart. So, Kamati Navade, those who doesn't speak less, that is a Kavi or a scholar. Further, he adds, he should not speak less, but whatever he speaks should be valuable. As there is a phrase, you, you have just said what is worth millions. So, if that person doesn't have these qualities, if a person lacks these qualities, then reverse it. That will be weak in English. The one who doesn't have any good quality. So if you want to be a poet or a scholar in the society and you want to shine, that people should listen to you. Sometimes people say that they complain that nobody listens to me. But are you speaking anything that is worth speaking? Why will someone listen to you? You should have that art and you should have that potency strength that when a person speaks people are affected 
so that will come only when we listen to bhagavatam and this past time especially if we listen to this past time a person becomes a wise learned scholar so if someone remembers this past time he becomes a scholar so kavi ke kitne aur se kahe wo aap log jana aur bhi acharya kehte hain kavi so further the acharyas or scholars speak that kavi implies who is the knower of all the vedic scriptures and vedic injunctions that person is a scholar and in this verse here kabir bhavati mantra gives by listening or remembering this past time you will be able to understand the mantras you will understand the glories of the mantras and further it is added by the scholars it implies tatva vigyani that is a person who has who has the knowledge and he has practice or experience the same who knows the essence of the philosophy is a poet or a scholar rishab dev's elder son was kavi narad ko utanpad dhruv bhagwan ke vishay mein tells narad muni about dhruv maharaj that he is a kavi refers to him as a kavi or a scholar so this word is quite repeated in bhagavatam many times so kavi also refers to a devotee so in essence smarit prat hai sayam sa tu samahit kavir bhavati mantra kya to kavi ban jayega mantra he comes a scholar he becomes aware of the mantra and gatim chev tathatmana he will attain the abode of the lord atmagati so there are many many meanings of this atmagati atmavidya that is self realization so by understanding this past time or remembering this past time a person will become self realized bhishma pitama refers to bhagavad gita as atmavidya so he will understand the scriptures like bhagavad gita if he remembers this past time carefully diligently it also refers to atmana means gati is prasang ko sunne se vyakti apni gati aur dusro ki gati ye dono so after remembering to this past time and listening to the same kya kahenge a person will become an expert to understand his own and others gati to apni gati so if someone remembers this again and again then he will become an expert in knowing aur ek arth acharya kehte hain ki themselves or self realize and for others as well or we can make others self realize as well apne lakshano ko janne lagega who he will be aware of his situation and correct and according to that he will progress in his path of devotional service gatim also means swarup that is he will get situated in his eternal form and our eternal form is of the servitor of the lord so aaj hamara swarup kuch badal chuka hai but today we have another form we don't consider ourselves to be the servant we consider ourselves to be the owner lekin yah or lord of everything but by listening to this past time we will situate ourselves in the our eternal form then it also refers to parmatma gati we can attain the lord and we can get relief of coming again and again to this material earth. and gurudev has said gatim chev tathatma na means that we will attain the 
Gati of Nabhag, if we listen to this person. So, there were three things that happened to him. He got great opulence and he got the knowledge of scriptures from Lord Shiva and he got a great opulent son. So these are the benefits we can also get by listening to this pastime, remembering this pastime. So in the ninth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, this pastime is there. And this is the fruit of listening to the same. So whatever time we have, let's listen to this pastime. As I mentioned earlier, that in the lineage of Brahmaji, Manuj's son, ninth son was Nabhag, and Nabhag had four sons, and the youngest was Nabhag. So what happened? So he was the youngest, and he was begotten after a very, very long time. So he was the very, very young as in comparison to his elder brothers. His elder brothers were all married. And Nabhag was still studying in a Gurukul. And here it so happened that these three brothers were married. And Nabhag became old. And it was time for him to retire. So, these three brothers thought that now father is old. What will happen to his wealth? So let's do one thing. We will distribute among us, three of us. So they divided the property in the third. So someone said that you have the youngest brother as well, who is a fourth. So he, his share should also be kept aside. But these three, were so sinful and irreligious that they said that when he will come we will see right now we shall just divide it into three you all also have a family and we live in a society in a person who lives in a family he should be always careful if we are elder or then someone then the younger should be given the comforts first if we don't do that then how we can call ourselves to be elder a person is not old by his age but by his magnanimous or magnanimity or benevolence so we have learned this from our first parents. Whatever they got. So they used to give it to the younger ones and that is what we have learned. And that is what we have read in the Vedic scriptures or injunctions. When Ramji was to be coronated as the king, all the denizens of Ayodhya were happy and satisfied. But Lord Ram was completely dissatisfied, unhappy. When Vishishri came, that, oh, Raghav, tomorrow you have to fast because you will be coronated as the king that has been decided by your father, King Dashrath. Ramji was unable to speak, sleep, and throughout the night he was weeping. And the reason was he was regretting that this pure disciplic succession, like Mother Ganga, there were so many benevolent, great kings in our lineage. I was born in such a beautiful family. I was born in such a pious family where there were so many great, great kings who have always protected the women brahmanas of the society and they didn't even care for their life. And Harishandra let go of all his wealth and opulence just to keep his promise. But today, the 
Raghu Kul or the clan of Raghus have faltered, they have committed a mistake and what has they done or what did they do? So he says, Ramji is thinking that we are four brothers, there are three younger siblings, Lakshman, Bharat, Chatrugat. When he should have made all four of us the king, I have three younger brothers and I alone is being coronated. This is not appropriate. This is a wrong decision of Ayodhya. This is the benevolence or magnanimity of elders. If you are a head of an organization, society, or a family, then this should be our thought that whatever we are getting, our younger should get it before us. Then only we will be have this privilege of being the elder. So whatever was in the, the chair of his youngest brother, they, that also they are taking. So the youngest one was studying in the Gurukul. They should have kept a bigger portion for him that when he will become adult and get married. So rather than giving him, the, they just didn't kept anything for him and they divided everything amongst three of them and started enjoying. But this Nabhag, who was the youngest, when he concluded his education and came back home, he, the whole situation was, they all have separated and Nabhag went to all his brothers and said that you all have divided and what do I get in my share? These three were so, so cunning and shrewd. So they told the youngest brother that Nabhag, you have just studied in Gurukul. So just reply we have a question whether the person who whether the wealth is greater or the wealthier he said obviously the wealthy person is important than the wealth it is the value of the wealthy person so this that we have divided the wealth but the father who had all this wealth is in your share. You only said that the wealthier person is greater than the wealth. So you can take the father and leave. So Nabhag was an old restitute man. They have taken all his wealth and left him. But Nabhag had studied. He was the knower of the Vedic injunctions and scriptures. And he thought that, no worries, I will just serve my father. He made a small cottage and he kept his father there and started serving him. Father told, oh, sir, your brothers have cheated you. He said, no worries, I've got this opportunity to serve. This is my most fortune. But the father was feeling sorry that these all have deceived and cheated, deceived him and told him or gave the responsibility to serve me. So he always used to tell him, don't worry, one day you will see, you will get more wealth and opulence even than three of your brothers, don't worry. Nabhag used to serve his father and one day he, his father said, he said that there are a few sages who are performing a fire sacrifice 
and they have been performing this sacrifice for many many years but they are unsuccessful yet therefore they are constantly performing this particle so he said that what is the problem what where do they lack so he replied so that every sixth day they are committing a mistake or error so nabhag told his beloved son nabhag you should go and there and tell them that you should recite this mantra then they will complete their fire sacrifice and these sages were not worried about the opulence but they have used so much wealth and opulence when so they will attain the heavenly planet and you will get the wealth whatever is remaining there so nabhag was important it was wise so he he told his father everything is correct but i am just a small child he was just a 16 18 year old boy great great sages if i go there and tell them that you are committing a mistake and i can rectify your error then won't they feel bad about it won't their ego be hurt so, so they are all wise old scholars so this the society someday if a senior listens on youtube and without any reason they become displeased without any reason so it so happens so nabhag told oh, dear father won't they think that this small child is trying to counsel us then father nabhag replied beautifully they said they are not ordinary people they are mahatmas they are great souls so here, if a guru tells something then the disciple gets agitated if a elder so i am talking about people like us our situation is such that we have some shortcomings and by mercy a spiritual master guides us and he is not going to be benefited he's doing it for our welfare yet we feel bad we get this please when a spiritual master tries to rectify us then if a person who is junior to us if he tells us something or counsels us then how will we feel so it is very hard to let go of our ego in devotion service we don't, we daily recite what chaitanya mahaprabhu has said we are so expert in that we, every morning we recite it but we still are entangled in the same so nabhag said that they are not any ordinary people they are great saintly souls and they will be satisfied even happy when you will speak if a small child tells something that is a great thing then you will be satisfied that this person is going to progress but people get displeased he said that don't worry and you should go they won't feel displeased on the council of his father nabhag went to the rishis of angiras gotra and with folded hands he requested them that if you don't feel bad i have one thing that i have to 
I want to tell you, uh, on every sixth day, you're committing an error. You all have been performing this yag for so many years. If I rectify, then it will be done in no time. As he recited the mantra correctly, and the fire sacrifice was concluded, and there was the oracle, and all these sages and saints or brahmanas went to the heavenly planets in front of Nabog's eyes. And they told, while leaving, whatever wealth is there of this fire sacrifice, you can take because we all are leaving for heavenly planets. We don't need them anymore. So the sages went and Nabhag was amazed. He didn't have any back. So he, he started accumulating everything. And then he just was about to leave to his home. And as soon he started approaching, Shukdev Goswami replies or writes, as soon as he started picking that, he saw Purusha Krishna Darshana. At that time, what did Nabhak saw? From east, there was a person who was as black as fur, and he told him to stop. He said, this wealth belongs to me. So, this person came from Uttar, that is the So, in Dakshin, Lord Rameshwar is there. But who is here in the north? So, in Uttara or north is Uttarakhand. Who, who is the controller of Uttarakhand? That is Devadi Dev, Mahadev. Nor, in north, we have Kailasha. And Shivji appeared. But he, he came in a different form and told him to stop. He said that this wealth belongs to me. Nabhag was an innocent boy. He said, how can you say that? These sages have told. <laughs> so, these days, we, they, we have recording and people are expert in that. But he said that all these sages have said that you can take it. It's yours. So, he said that whatever left over of the homo or fire sacrifice belongs to me. He said, how is it possible? I spoke the mantra and the sages left and they said that this belongs to you. That person said this belongs to me. So when there was this discussion, then he said that if you don't believe me, you should go and ask your father. He said that don't worry, you can take these these bags that you fill. She said that whatever you have accumulated, you can take it to your father because Shivji is the most benevolent. He doesn't need any wealth. He was just testing Nabhag. He came to his father. He said, father was sleeping, resting. He was an old man. He told his father that everything was perfect as you have mentioned or explained. And there was a person who appeared and he said that this, everything is fine. He said that that person told you that this belongs to him. And he said, oh son, Nabhag, today your fortune has a reason because he's not any honorary person. In the north, Lord Shiva resides, and you have had an audience with Lord Shiva himself, and this is true. In Daksh Prajapati's fire sacrifice, it was appointed by Daksha that the leftover of the fire sacrifice belongs to Lord Shiva, so he is right. So 
if it's in our providence, we will get it in future. But this wealth belongs to him and you should return it to him immediately. <laughs> if it were having some money from today's verse, we would have said that he's not going to counter uh, whatever is so you can keep a, a little but they were all following the principles of religiosity he said that don't waste any more time immediately you should return it to lord shiva this is a pastime of Srimad bhagavatam this is in ninth canto i'm telling in short but it is spoken elaborately with each verse explained in detail so there was this person who was standing there he venerated him and said that please forgive me oh lord shiva i had a discussion with you i was not aware so please take this well this belongs to you shivji was amazed he said that if a person gets a five rupee note they don't they change their path where they will ask and now you're here to return to me Shivji was extremely elated, satisfied. He said, Nabhak, you take all this wealth. I don't need any wealth. Or I was just testing you and your principles of religiosity that you have fixed on your principles of religiosity. He said, don't worry. Wealth is not that important. Everybody can have wealth. But let me give you the knowledge of or the transcendental on, or self-realization. He was given this transcendental divine self-knowledge of self-realization. And thus Nabag became wealthy, learned devotee of the Lord. And what happened? He got so much wealth and opulence because the uh, other three have already spent without mercy and blessing how much can the wealth sustain today or tomorrow you're going to lose it easy money as quickly it comes as that it goes as quickly as well but the wealth that you have attained by working hard you will not lose it so easily so here Nabhag got three benefits of truth. First, he got the knowledge of self-realization or devotion towards the Lord. And second, the wealth that is he had was more than compared to all the three collectively. But the biggest boon that he received was the, such a who had served his father, a person who serves his Nabhag had a great opulent son who was the greatest devotee of the Lord, that is Ambrish Maharaj. Nabhag was the father of Ambrish Maharaj. We listened to his pastimes in Bhagavatam who for such Ambrish Lord's discuss chased Durvasa Muni who was the king of the whole mother earth who he was the son of this Nabhak so in the household or realm of life the success is dependent on the success of the children the Nabhak was successful as he begot a great devotee son as Amrish so if someone listens to this pastime they attain the eternal abode of the Lord and he becomes wise learned scholar so in this manner we have concluded 25 shruti falls today so you all have been listening with great patience so i'm really grateful to all of you especially want to thank the organizers of this katha from melbourne australia Shri Mati manika mataji and Kusum Singh Mataji and Ruma Roy Mataji and her mother Deepthi Roy. You all have been sitting and listening. So definitely for sure your ancestors and forefathers Sri Raghunath Ji, Gidharji, 
राजेश्वरी माता भगवती माता और एंड शुभदेव सिंह परिवार के एंड फ्रॉम रॉय परिवार फैमिली जिसका एक साल पहले ही निधन हुआ श्री बाबुल चंद्र रॉय बाबुल चंद्र रॉय दे ऑल हैव अटेंड लिबरेशन by listening to the bhagavatam there is no doubt so i'm really thankful to all of you so let's conclude the seventh day session with jajika the 376th katha so jay jay kar ke sath so let's conclude this 376th katha with jajika kar grantaraj shrimad bhagavatam mahapuran ke Sri Krishna.